Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Google Pixel XL and see how this particular phone holds up in 2024. Now, I will tell you for the everyday average person, I probably would not recommend buying a phone like this anymore. And the main reason for this is because this phone is quite a bit outdated. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense to go and buy these types of devices anymore because hardware and software wise, they're a little bit outdated. But the, you know, hardware, I would say is kind of a little bit more outdated than the software now nowadays for some of these older devices. But luckily for you, if you want to pick up some phones that I would recommend buying this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the exact same time. Now, the big thing to keep in mind here for the most part is that when Google made these particular phones, these were the first generation of pixels. Right before this, we didn't really have any Pixel phones, which was, you know, understandable because we had the Nexus lineup before. And this was kind of like the biggest phone that they made. I think the Nexus 6 was also very big, probably bigger than this thing, but this was a very, very big phone because it was the XL model. Now, this one on the front had a 5.5 inch AMOLED display on the front, which, you know, I thought was great. You know, it's a good type of panel. The problem though, and you know, this phone came out in 2016. So this one did not come out like, you know, yesterday. This was a very old phone. This was a, you know, this was the type of design that most phones were going for at the time. But I think the problem with this phone was that you were basically getting massive bezels on the top and the bottom. But you know, with an iPhone, which still had home buttons at the time, at least those ones had, you know, home buttons. This one basically just had a massive bezel on it where it probably didn't need this much bezel. Even the Samsung Galaxies at that time still had home buttons too. But with this one, the bezel made no sense. I don't even know why they kept it this big. I feel like they could have shortened it a little bit or shrunk it, or at the very least put a front facing speaker like they did on the previous phones. On the Nexus 6P and the Nexus 6, and I think the Nexus 5X, they had front facing speakers on it. This one they did not. So I don't know why they removed it. They should have kept it like they did on the, they brought it back with the Pixel 2s, but still it was a very, very weird decision that they ended up making here. On the bottom, you were getting a USB type C port, which is amazing. And you were getting a headphone jack as well. So that kind of stuff is really nice to have. I love having headphone jacks and I love having USB type C. And you were basically getting both of those things inside of this particular device. And I was very, very happy about that. It was a really, you know, expensive feeling phone too. Like this phone felt very, very you know, expensive when it first came out. On the back side, you're basically getting this full on aluminum back, which again, still looks great, but you were getting glass on the very top portion too, which is also very crazy. So you probably wouldn't expect to get glass on and aluminum on a phone on the back usually, but that was a very cool thing that was going on here too. And I actually was a humongous fan of this phone again from that particular side. You were getting a single camera setup on the back side, fingerprint sensor on the back side as well. And overall, when I look at this phone, this phone in a lot of ways, you know, it's a, it's a good looking phone. You know, it's a good feeling phone. I don't think it's the best looking phone, even from 2016, it's not the best looking phone of all time. And I would definitely say the looks in this case really did kind of hinder this phone, but there were other areas of this phone that really kind of made up for it. Now, some things that this phone is missing out on that a lot of phones have nowadays. One, you were not getting any wireless charging on this phone. So that's a big thing to keep in mind. If you're planning on buying a phone, this thing is not giving you any wireless charging. This phone is also not giving you any, you know, basically any multiple camera setup, which is another big deal. Also, no high refresh rate on this panel and not even really any IP certification. So this phone isn't really giving you any IP certification when it comes down to it, which that in and of itself, again, can kind of be an issue for some people as well. So when it comes down to the outside, that's kind of how I would kind of sum it up. You know, it's not a terrible phone, but from the exterior, that's kind of how it holds up in this particular situation. Now, on top of that, some other big things to keep in mind. One, with this phone's camera, this was probably one of the biggest assets for this phone when it first came out. I remember for a long, long time, as most of you probably remember, the Nexus lineup of cameras weren't really that great. A lot of people would make fun of the Nexus phones and a lot of people hated them. I, you know, for one, thought they were good, you know, with the Nexus lineup, but they were never amazing. And I had a Nexus 4 for a long time and it gave me so many issues. The Pixel XL's camera when it first came out was actually probably one of the best ones of that year. You were getting 4K at 30 on the back with a 12.3 megapixel single camera. And on the front, you were getting an 8 megapixel 1080p camera. So these types of lenses in a lot of ways held up very, very well compared to the competition. Now, even though this thing only had one camera sensor versus like, you know, other cameras that had multiple ones, I would still say this camera held up very well because of the post-processing that Google was able to do for their images. 
And that was a very cool thing that Google was able to do at the time. And this is where they really started kind of focusing in on their cameras. I would say a couple generations after this, they really started messing up. But I would say in a lot of ways, I am, you know, I love this camera so much. I think it's a very, very good type of camera. And I do think from that side, you know, for a phone from 2016, this camera is still very decent. But it's not perfect and there definitely are issues with this type of lens and that can kind of be an issue when you're going through and buying a camera like this. So from that side, I'll definitely tell you in my personal opinion, this type of camera, not terrible, but it's not like crazy, you know, you know, it was a good camera when it first came out. It's just not a good camera anymore, but that's kind of what happens when you're getting these types of older devices. So from that side, again, that kind of covers it up there. From the software side, this phone is completely outdated with software. It's like four versions of Android behind, but it did last for a couple of generations. And because this, this was a, you know, stock Google phone, Google was able to continue to support this thing for a couple of generations, which I actually liked a lot. So if you were to go, you know, basically to go through and buy a phone, I actually did like the fact that this phone was giving you that type of capability of giving you a pretty solid experience when it comes down to the software side. And these things got day one updates. So as soon as an update came out, you're basically getting it on this phone, which again was very nice. The issue with this phone is that it's already outdated with software. It's been outdated for a couple of years and it just doesn't make any sense buying a phone if it's already going to be outdated with software. And this thing is outdated. Even if you plan on buying it at custom roaming it, I still probably wouldn't recommend you to buy it because it is already severely, severely outdated. So do yourself a bit, you know, favor, buy yourself a phone that is still supported with software that still has some features ahead of it and go down that direction rather than going through and buying a phone that's basically, you know, doesn't have any software updates, doesn't have anything going forward in the future. So that right there is another very big thing I'd recommend you all to do as well. Now, finally, when it comes down to the performance side of this particular phone, this device on the front or internally was giving you that Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chip set aside with four gigabytes of RAM. And at that time, that was about what you were getting on a majority of other phones, you know, during that time. So when you're comparing and you're looking at other phones at that time, this type of device was basically giving you the same type of chipset that you're going to be getting on most other phones too. So I think that's a very big thing to keep in mind. Like if you were to go through and buy a phone, this thing is basically giving you the same type of chipset from that particular you know, situation. So that was good. I would say for a phone of today's standards, not like crazy great. It's not like the best device I've ever seen, but it's not like terrible either. And I do think that's a very nice thing that the you know performance of this phone is actually fairly good. It's not perfect though, which is the problem. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but for even for a 2016 phone, I think the iPhone 7 Plus's performance is overall better than this thing. But for an Android phone with stock Android and everything, I think it's actually a fairly decent performing phone which I think is actually pretty nice when it comes down to it. But again, it's an old phone and it does perform like an old phone. It takes a long time to load things up and everything like that. So from that side, that kind of covers it up there as well. And to be honest, I think to kind of sum up this whole entire video, I like, you know, the Google Pixel XL. I think it was a great phone. I think it had a lot of capability, a lot of quality, all that good stuff. I just don't know if this would be a phone I'd recommend anyone to buy anymore. I think there are significantly better phones to buy than this thing. And I don't think anybody should be buying a phone like this. So just keep that in mind. But I do think for the most part, other devices like, uh, you know, Google Pixel you know, 7, Google Pixel 6, Google Pixel 5 even, uh, Samsung Galaxy S21 or above, those phones are definitely way better than this one. So that's kind of how it's summed up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions though, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.